thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sins and shame, in love you came and gave. from John chapter 19 verse 30 John chapter 19 verse 30 and it reads I'm going to start with 29 really now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon Esau and put it in his mouth when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said, it is finished, and bowed his head and gave up the ghosts. He said, it is finished, mission accomplished. If we remember when he was small at age 12, when his mother saw him in the synagogue, you know, arguing with people, he said, why are you looking for me? I have to go about to do my father's business. So at the cross, he said, that business, that job I came to do, it's accomplished. It is finished. And at the time he said this word, it was the ninth hour, which is about three o'clock. It is finished because Finally, my life is given as a ransom for mankind. Finally, the wrath of God is upon me to redeem man back to myself. It is finished to suffering. It is finished to every sin you and I committed. That once we give our lives to Christ... On the cross, that sin is wiped away. It is finished to the guilt from the enemy. It is finished to the work of Satan because it was after the cross he went down to take the key of hell and death from the enemy. So he blew Satan away. A deadly blow. It was finished to the suffering, it was finished. To the intimidation, it was finished. For you and I, for every problems that we had. Because the cross was a place of exchange. The cross was a place of redemption. 
The cross was a place where curse was dealt with. The, co the cross was a place where there was payment for sin. So he paid it all. So Satan has no reason to attack us any longer. That is why in 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 24 to 25 there, he said, by his stripes we were ill. So Satan has no right to put any sickness on you and I any longer. He said, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripe you were healed. We've been healed. We've been healed because we went astray. But Christ's love brought us back to the cross. And he said, it is finished. Finished to sickness. Finished to COVID-19. Finished to diabetes. Finished to high blood pressure. Finished to cancer. He bore that stripe on his body. And he said, it is finished. I want you to tell yourself, Satan has no way to accuse you any longer. It is finished. It is finished to so the prophetic words said about him. There were a lot of prophecies. More than 25 prophetic words said about Jesus. And he said, it is finished. Let's look at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 from verse 3 to, to 6 there. Jesus came to fulfill it. Isaiah 53 said, he is despised and rejected of men. He knew he was going to go through all this. A man of sorrow acquainted with grief. The grief of sin was upon him. The wrath of God was upon him. And he hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Verse 4. Surely he had borne our grief. He carried our sorrows. Yet he did not esteem him stricken. Smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripe we are healed. So it was finished to trouble. It was finished to curse. It was finished to sicknesses. It was finished to oppression. That's why I know someone here. I want you to appropriate what Jesus has done. Jesus has paid the price. It is finished. He has paid it. Don't accept the verdict of the enemy in your life any longer. This Good Friday, look at what Jesus did on the cross and appropriate it to your situation and you will live in triumph in the name of Jesus. It was finished to oppression. And today, I have come to tell us that he satisfied what God wanted. That he must give his life for ransom. His love was accomplished. He said, for God so loved the world. John 3, 16. That he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. You might be the whosoever. Will not perish but have everlasting life. He has paid a price. So Accept him. There's an exchange in the, in the cross. It was finished also because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. He shed his blood. So that was done. He destroyed the power of death. It was finished. The work was accomplished. And that is why I thank God because he didn't run away. Though he faced the cross, he felt alone. But he went through because of you and I. He endured the cross because of you, your salvation and my salvation. He has paid it all. Thank you, Lord, for that price you paid on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the seventh word, the very last statement of Jesus is seen in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Luke chapter 23, verse 46. 
Luke chapter 23, verse 46. That was the very last word he said. And when Jesus has cried with a loud voice, he cried because he went through torment. This showed his human nature. He had the pain. He cried with a loud voice. He said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Remember, Pilate was trying to tell him, if you don't talk, I have the power to, you know, kill you. He said, no. Except you've been given by my father. You don't have the power. So Jesus chose to give his life. And at the end of it, he gave his spirit to the father. He released his spirit to the father. Remember, this is very unique. Because without him releasing the spirit, we will not have the Holy Spirit. He said, I must go. If I do not go, you will not have the Holy Spirit. So it was very, very necessary that Jesus left so that we, his followers, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And today I have come to tell someone, he willingly, joyfully gave his life for the ransom. He gave his spirit back to God. Work has been completed and he knew that if he doesn't release the spirit, the believers will not be able to get the spirit. He was getting back a word that was a prophetic word in the book of Psalm 31 verse 5. In fact, Jesus was recalling what happened in Psalm 31 verse 5. When David said, Psalm 31 verse 5, that he said, Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. So you can see that Jesus went back to the Old Testament to recall what David said. Yes, even before he came, that I commit my spirit to you. And today, when he did that, after he did that, he freely gave his ghost. He freely gave himself away. And uh, I want to read verse 4 to 7 there. 26. So, into the, uh, uh, then he said, now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God saying, certainly, this was a righteous man. Certainly. So the response of the onlookers, the response of the people, because of the way he gave his life, it was finished. He has given back his spirit. He said, this is a righteous man. How are you going to respond? My fellow ministers have said it. How are you going to respond? What was the importance of this cross. What was the importance of this cross? So many things happened to the, in the cross. I want to just look at three of it. Remember, I said it is finished. It's given his, his, uh, his, his spirit back to the Father. He addressed the Father. It was in the cross. The first thing that sin, it became sin in order to make us righteous. It became sin in order for you and I to become righteous. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he said, For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made what the righteousness of God. The importance of the cross, as we look into the cross, the seven ways of Jesus is was. It was made sin so that you become righteous. There was a divine exchange. Yes, there was a divine exchange. That's why there's room in the cross. Once you come to the cross, for your sin, you get righteousness. If forgive, but it is necessary. Your, 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 your response is that you must recognize you are separated from God. Sin separates us from God. 
You must realize you need the Savior. You must realize that when you repent, then you accept him into your life. Then the spirit that it released will come into you. You must realize that. So he made us righteous. Christ became sin for us. So that once we accept this free gift, we become the righteousness of God. The second thing he did on the cross, he became poor in order to make us rich. These are the things we have to learn in the cross. The significance of the cross, the exchange in the cross. You brought your poverty, you brought your sickness, you brought your depression, you brought your confusion. He gave us peace. He made us rich, rich in him, rich all over. Because he has paid the price for your poverty. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. He said, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye might through his poverty be rich. So Satan has no right to put poverty in you, to put lack in you any longer. The price has been paid on the cross. Everything you need, all that pertain to life and godliness has been given to us. So, all you need to know, look at the cross, what Christ has done. The price he has paid. You don't need to pay any other price. All you just need to do in simple faith. Do you know, the grace of God is God reaching out to you and I. But by faith, we reach back to God. That is it. The grace, we are saved by grace through faith. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Grace reaches out to you and I, but faith is you and I reaching back to God to get whatever we want. It became poor so that you become rich. That's why he said, for you to get these riches, all you just need to do is seek ye first the kingdom, Matthew 6, 33. And all is righteousness. Then every other thing people are running after. We run after you. That means put the cross first. Then every other thing we follow. The cross is only the place. The path to, to salvation. There's no other path. The Bible says there is a way that cement right unto a man. But the end of it is death. The only path to salvation is the cross. I want you to accept the price he has paid for you and I on the cross. The third thing I'm going to discuss is it became cause in order to make us blessing. Let's look at Galatians chapter, chapter 3, verse 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ became cause for you and I. That's why Satan has no right to put any cause in you. He, he said, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is every man that and get on the tree. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon what? The Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Whether Jew or Greek, or Gentiles, once we come to the cross, he has brought all of us together. That the blessing of Abraham, what was the blessing of Abraham? God, when you look at G Genesis chapter 12, he said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. And the blessing of Abraham is the one that we have through Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. You have an abundance. It's not only about physical blessings, it's spiritual, it's all-round blessing. All-round blessing. And you become a blessing to people. Christ doesn't just want you to be having enough, he wants you to be a blessing to nations. That was the price he paid on the cross. On the cross, there was that divine exchange. And it is my prayer that you will look deeply into your life. And receive 
with gladness what he has paid for. What he has given you. The cross brought about an end to the cross. The cross paid the price for sin, the cost of it. The cross was a place where the mission was accomplished for the perfect redemption of man. The cure for sin was the blood that was paid on the cross. Do I have someone there who don't have a relationship with Christ? I want to invite you. Because the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. But St. Paul said something in Galatians chapter 6. I will end it there. Verse 14. He said, my boasting. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. I will end it there. He said, my boasting is on the cross. The cross of Jesus. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. He said, but God forbid that I should glory in any other thing. Save what the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. That is the only thing we glory. The glory of the cross is the glory of salvation. The glory of the cross is the glory of redemption. The glory of the cross was the price that was paid perfectly, completely, and puts an end, finish to problems, finish to tribulation, finish to poverty, finish to unrighteousness. And he gave us righteousness, the divine exchange. I want to invite you, if you don't have a relationship with him, that come to the cross of Jesus and receive life. He has paid it. Galatians 5, 8, 7, why we were sinners, Christ died for us. He has paid it. You don't need to remain in sin. If you want to give your life to Christ, you can tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Galatians 5, 8, be my Savior. He has paid it. He has paid it. He has paid it. You don't need to remain in sin. Sin. Romans 5 8, I mean, Romans 5 8. He has paid it. You don't need to remain in sin. I want you to invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Because he has paid the price. Why you were yet sinner? So all you just need to do, accept him by faith. And you will live this victorious life. And there will be an end. To rejection be an end to trouble because you live by faith, you don't live by sight. The cross made a way for us, the cross has saved us, the cross brought an end to unrighteousness. Father, once more, we thank you. I want you to pray with us. As I said, it has redeemed us from the cause of the law on the cross. I want you to pray that, Lord, any cause that is still on my life, Father, today, Lord, by your blood, you have redeemed me from the cause of the Lord. Let those cause be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Remember, he has redeemed you from the cause of the Lord. I want you to pray. Any cause that is hovering over you or your family, I want you to tap on what God has done on the cross today and say, Lord, by your blood, I come against every cause oh lord in my family line let it be destroyed let it be broken in the name of jesus let it be destroyed let it be broken in the name of jesus his word says every handwritten ordinances that were contrary we are nailed on the cross every handwritten ordinances contrary to your well-being contrary to your success contrary to your home god said he nailed it on the cross it doesn't matter 
family line, God has given you a new name. He said, as many that receive him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. You are the child of God. You have the DNA of Christ. He said, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You are a new person in Christ. So Satan cannot hold you down any longer. Every cause against our nation. Even right now, we stand in the gap for nations. We stand in the gap for the city. That by the blood, Jesus has redeemed us from the cause. Father, Lord, we pray that every, every cause of COVID-19 will be dealt with by your blood in the name of Jesus. We put the blood mark over every family. We put the blood mark over the church of God. That, Lord, you have redeemed us so Satan has no right to destroy us any longer in the name of Jesus. Father, we say we thank you. As I said, it was made poor so that through his poverty you become rich. So I want you to pray against every spirit of poverty. It's a spirit. I want you to pray. Father, Lord, we pray against every spirit of poverty. Every spirit, oh Lord, that wants to hold us and stagnation, we come against it by your blood. Every spirit, oh Lord, of poverty, every spirit of lack, every spirit of stagnation, we come against you by the blood of Jesus. It has been shared on Calvary for us. He was made poor so that through his poverty we become rich. We pull down the stronghold of the enemy concerning our lives, concerning our nations. Father, we say we thank you. Thank you for paying the price, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. You came to reconcile us back to the Father. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you for the loss that has been ca called back, back to yourself, O oh Lord. Thank you for restoration, O oh Lord. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for revival in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say we thank you that, Lord, as many that has log in to view this live broadcast. Father, Lord, I pray for them and pray for myself that the God of heaven himself will lift us up wherever we go in the name of Jesus. That the blood that was shed on Calvary will contend with any forces of darkness that we shall continuously be victorious in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because I cover each and every one of us by the blood. Father, your word says no weapon form or fashion against us shall prosper. Father, your word says neither will the plague come near our dwelling. Father, Lord, by the reasoning of the blood, you are the resurrected Christ. We serve a resurrected Christ. He's not dead any longer is not in the tomb. The power of resurrection. We quicken everything that seems to be dead in our lives in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the cross we have peace. He said my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Receive the peace of God. Receive the peace of God. Receive the peace of God. Shalom to you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Once more, thank you. You, you are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in a mist, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. Hey, we make a miracle. Light and the darkness, my God, that is who 